Hello. In this video, I'll show you how I troubleshoot an electronic board from a high-speed door, model Cool It TYP SLT 15, manufactured in 2020. If you have a similar door or are passionate about electronics, this tutorial is perfect for you. Don't forget to give this video a like, leave a comment with your questions or suggestions, and subscribe to the channel to support me and encourage me to continue creating new helpful videos. This electronic board was subjected to incorrect power supply, receiving a voltage of 400 volts instead of the nominal voltage of 230 volts. This situation led to the failure of several components and circuits on the electronic board. These include the short-circuiting of the filtering capacitor, damage to the IGBT transistor module, an individual IGBT transistor, and multiple integrated circuits. All these damaged components will be analyzed and presented in detail in the following steps. I replaced the IGBT module and the filtering capacitor with new components compatible with the board specifications. The remaining damaged components were carefully desoldered to avoid damaging the traces. Next, I will show you step by step how I installed the new components on the board. As can be seen, the capacitor I desoldered is short-circuited, indicating an internal failure. This can lead to excessive current consumption and overheating of surrounding components, significantly affecting the proper functioning of the electronic board. I have also received the remaining components purchased from the online store, tme.eu. These include high-quality spare parts, compatible with the specifications of the electronic board I am repairing. Each component was carefully selected to ensure proper and durable operation of the system. Next, I will begin the assembly process. I will not use hot air during the assembly process to avoid damaging the surrounding components. I will opt for a more delicate method, using a precision soldering iron with controlled temperatures, to ensure proper and safe soldering without the risk of affecting the adjacent parts. This approach allows me to protect the board and ensure a high-quality repair.
If you've made it this far, it means you're passionate about electronics. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe, as it means a lot to me. Thank you, and stay tuned to see the final result. Here is the complete recap, damage traces, the traces affected by defective components or overvoltage have been repaired or reconnected, ensuring the continuity of electrical signals on the board. IGBT module, it was replaced with a new one, as it was damaged due to incorrect power supply with too high voltage, 400 volts instead of 230 volts. Filtering capacitor, it was replaced with a new one, as the old capacitor was short-circuited, which was affecting the proper power supply to the circuits. Integrated circuits, several integrated circuits were desoldered and replaced with new ones after damage caused by overheating or short-circuiting was identified. I will power the board with the correct voltage to check the result of the repairs. After connecting it to the power source, I will monitor the board's behavior to ensure that all components are functioning properly and that no issues such as overheating or short-circuiting occur. This is the final step to confirm that the repairs were successful and the board is operational. As I can see, everything is fine, and the repairs have been successfully completed. 
I will install the board in the door control panel myself to ensure that everything is connected properly and to prevent any further issues. This step is important to verify that the board works correctly under real operating conditions and that the system is fully stabilized. I applied silicone grease to the components that require cooling to improve heat dissipation and prevent overheating. I mounted the repaired board on the heat sink. I also mounted the control board. As you can see, the repair was a real success and the door is working perfectly again. If you liked this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like, leave a comment with your questions or suggestions, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future tutorials. Thank you for watching, and until next time, good luck with all your repairs.